it puts the the viewer into that place and you and you know you're, you're yeah just cut words it right there <laughs> <laughs> i sit up there get ready to go on and just cut it right there <laughs> Welcome back to Street PX, a street photography podcast where we deal with all things documentary, reportage, and, you know, as said, street. Street photography, that's right, man. <laughs> it is episode 46, August 25, and we're about to jump right into this one, um, but we got some plugs to throw out, don't we? Let's do it. Let's <laughs> well, do it. Of course, as always, I am Casper. This is Jim Watkins. And uh, first and foremost, we want to say Film Week. Film Week. We've gotten a lot of emails and talking with uh, listeners of the show, and you guys have been looking forward to this, so I guess it's about time to finally do it, right? Oh, I can't wait to do it, man. I can't, <laughs> can't, can't wait to get my hands on some film. You know, that HP5, man, that I used to shoot all the time. Man. HP5, huh? Oh, yeah, that was my stuff right there. And that Tri-X 400, yeah. As far as Film Week's concerned, we're going to be going, uh, we're going to be aiming for September 18th through 24th, and um, there's not a ton going on, but the main focus is for our listeners out there, ourselves included, um, to you know show a little love to the analog camera. Um, you know, focusing on you know putting the digital on the shelf for for just a week and, and dusting off uh, any old Canons, any old Minoltas mm-hmm. that you might have, yep. uh, Leicas for you you lawyers and doctors out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also a photo walk, just like we did last year, that is. Uh, uh, film only and we're going to try and do that there on the weekend of the 23rd and 24th so keep an eye on the street px lounge for any of those events um, we'll throw out invitations and wherever you are it doesn't have to be just here in san francisco but wherever you are um, get a group of people together and, and and just hit the streets with some film that's gonna be great man i can't yeah. wait can't a lot wait. of fun and it's also a time when we're going to be doing a film focused show uh we've already been in talks with and I'm going to go ahead and throw this out here. Uh, Nick Mayo of Nick Exposed on YouTube is going to be joining us there in September to come in and just just chat analog film. Cool. Yep. Cool. Um, and between now and then, if you have any questions you want to throw us or throw to Nick, definitely email us at contact at streetpx.com. Oh, and we cannot talk about film without bringing up our awesome sponsor, Glass Key Photo. That's San Francisco's premier go-to spot for all things analog film. Um, you can actually find them now at their new location at 1230 Sutter Street. And actually, me and today's guest, uh, when we were shooting downtown the other day, we went in to take a look, and I also filmed it. So if you want to walk through, you want to see what the store looks like now, uh, go over to streetpx.com and uh, look for our most recent blog post. You'll see that video. Um, it's also the place that we're going to be kicking off our film walk or our photo walk for film week um, there in September and uh, you know if you need some camera repairs need a new camera or need some film that day it'll already be ready so uh, they're open seven days a week from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. and in a place that we definitely recommend uh, to go and take a look at uh, like a store like a store San Francisco has a wicked new uh, exhibit going on right now with Jim Marshall focusing on the jazz festival era mm-hmm. and that is started on August 10th but that's that's going to be running till October 7. So if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, go and take a look. That's there on Bush Street. That's right. Jim Marshall is a fantastic photographer of that era. You know, he captured all of those all those music geniuses, the music giants of the era, man. It was fantastic. I saw the exhibit. Oh, loved it. Yes. yes. Loved it. Loved it. Um, what else? What else? Oh, uh, Photoville for you, New York people over there. Last year, I actually visited this uh, with uh, Nima Taraji and uh, Mike Lee. That's where I actually met Mike Lee the okay. first time. Yeah, uh, Photoville is just this. I don't know how other way to put it, but it's a weird ass <laughs> event, a, a exhibition where they stack a ton of um, storage containers right under the Brooklyn Bridge or in the Brooklyn Bridge Park, and within are different little featured galleries with different artists or different uh, uh, categories or genres. You know? mm-hmm. um, but when I went, I spent hours there, and and, and Scala uh, Natino, another friend of ours out of New York, he was he was there with me and check that out. That's going from September 13th through the 24th. 
Jimmy you have something to say on that? Oh, I, no, no. Just going just gonna to listen up. I was going to talk about, about the uh, the next thing up. Yeah. The Dark and Light exhibit, Jay Blakesburg. He's a rock and roll photographer, and he we're going to have an exhibit there November 9th at the Harvey Milk Photo Center. Mm-hmm. You got to check this out. It's going to be it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. Hopefully a few of these uh, rock and roll celebrities will show up. Don't know who, but then we may have some because they're all friends of Jay Blakesburg. But this will be a great show. November 9th, opening reception, um, and it runs until January 6th of 2018. Yeah, and they also have a, um, a secondary show going on at the McLaren Lodge. Oh, that's, um, that's right. That's over yeah. in Golden Gate Park. So um, the, the other thing, the main thing I want to note about that mm-hmm. is the way that they're printing. That's right. Yeah, metal prints. Mint, yeah, uh, float hang yeah. right on the wall. Mm-hmm. And for anybody that listened to our last show with Dave Christensen, he's the director over there at Harvey Moat Photo Center. We had brought up the fact uh, they have a. Um, a donation page where it's a lighting project so they have beautiful lighting that they got from the de young museum that's just sitting in the wings waiting to be installed and as everybody knows you got to pay to play <laughs> and yes, right. the harvey milk photo center is under the parks and rec so government mm-hmm. which doesn't which means cuts yeah. and not much money yeah. to play with so if anybody out there uh wants to help go take a look at harvey milk photo center dot org and um, just click on donate and you can give a few bucks or a few for that philanthropists out there uh they would be ever so in your uh favor for a, a, a nice big chunk of pushback. That's right, that's right. Yep. Right. Yep. So that's enough on the plugins, but if you do enjoy our show, go take a look at Patreon, throw a little bit our way, helps us keep the mics hot. Uh, or if you want to, just to help us without, not financially, share this show. There's going to be a post on our Facebook page. So go on Facebook and hit that old share button, get the voice, uh, get, get, get the awareness out there on Street PX, right? So anyway, enough of all that bullshit. It's time to sit down with a friend of ours um, who you may remember from our live show at Street Photo. Um, CJ was one of the finalists, and we pulled him in and out of the crowd. He was brave enough to come up and sit with us. He's and basically ambushed. Yes, basically ambushed. <laughs> but the good thing is he took that torch and just ran away. That's right, away. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like me, I remember me and Renzi just sitting off to the side going, this is working. Let's just let CJ just talk. This yeah. is working. Um, but but at that time, CJ only had like 15, 20 minutes with us, um, and we wanted to sit down with him and get a little bit more background on who he is as an artist, and plus he's got some kick-ass projects going on, and some in the past that you need to check out. So anyway, above all, welcome CJ to Street PX. Yeah, welcome to Thanks the show, so man. Much. I know we've been talking about this for a while. Yeah, yes, yeah, we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. After that's... you get a little taste of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so just kind of start out. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you kind of grow up? Where? where... All right. Well, I kind of moved around a lot. Uh, long story short, I guess. Uh, you know, born in L.A., moved to San Diego, moved up to Willits, which is about uh, two and a half hours north of here in the city, and then uh, joined the Marine Corps after that. Then moved up to Oregon. And, um, so Oregon was great. Um, you know, I didn't, when I was up there, I, uh, I, I did, I took a lot of photos up there, but it was more, you know, that's when like camera phones were just coming out. I didn't own like a camera or anything like that. Um, but it was just more about like taking photos of me and my drunk friends, uh, at football games, <laughs> and, you know, pissing people off, you know, let's get a photo. Ah, you know, yeah. the, you know, no, I want to drink. It's called so, proof. Yeah, exactly. You know, just trying to document these memories because I'm not going to remember them. The, the, you know, the next day. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, you know, I just kind of I started out that way, and then um, you know, just kind of growing up. My dad used to take photos of all of us all the time. You know, the family and stuff, and I hated it. I hated being in photos. I hated just uh-huh. like having to pose for them. Like, yeah, it was like the worst thing in the world. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, as like a 10-year-old kid, you know, you're just like, oh, God dang it, not again, you know. Mm-hmm. So I guess kind of that kind of wore off on me and somehow, I don't even know how, you know, just that transition sort of naturally occurred. Um, so now I know how my, you know, my friends knew how I felt or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when you're poking a camera yeah. right in your face. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, um, and then, uh, you know, life happens, you move around and stuff. Then I moved to here to San Francisco, and, you know, San Francisco, uh, that was back in 2010, and, you know, just the city, it's just a city full of artists, unfortunately, that are being driven out now. Um, That's no lie. But, yeah, so, you know, we make do with what we have, and uh, so now, living in the city, it's, uh, 
or you know just the friends that I met here in the city you know a lot of them are musicians a lot of them are artists so you know you just kind of get inspired so I kind of took up the camera you know I started you know on my way to work uh, you know walking through the city you know you just see so many different kind of interesting things you know so I would just always capture capture photos with my iPhone you know it's pretty shitty quality but it is what it is you know it's you know, it's more about the moment, you know, not, yeah, it is, right, uh, right, yeah, not right, about it is. like the quality, I guess. But the thing about this mobile phone is it's always with you. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm not, I'm not one to condemn the whole mobile phone photography, you know, <laughs> aspect, but it's true. It's sometimes we don't have our cameras or our batteries are dead. Yeah. Just whip yeah. the phone out and it's quick. I'm just not there yet, man. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> well, at one point I will be, but I'm not there yet. We got to yeah. update past that iPhone like four or five you got rocking in that pocket. <laughs> oh, hey, man. <laughs> it works for what I need. Yeah. This but is yeah, true. I, I do it's need, a phone first, I, I, though. No, I, that, I, I do have to say, I have seen some beautiful shots with iPhones. You, I mean, you, yeah. I've seen some of the stuff you've taken. I've with been shooting with the Pixel for yeah. a while, and yeah. to be honest, I've, I've been using it a lot. Actually, I've got a mobile phone class coming up. So yeah, see, yeah, there, there you go. What can you do? There you go. But well, uh, yeah, yeah, no, we, we, well, we, we digress. Yes, <laughs> we do. But uh, yeah, no. So now you know, the more I walked the city streets, the more I was walking to work. You know, the more I saw these like different opportunities different moments just people looking like in their own little world because in the city everybody's so concerned going from a to b a to b you know nobody kind of hangs out unless they're you know on the phone or something and still they're still kind of they're kind of still in that limbo all the way to b to their destination Mm -hmm. and um so i don't know just i started observing this more and more and more just these little moments that people were having and i just started shooting because i thought you know people looked interesting Mm -hmm. uh, Some more interesting than others. Exactly. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. definitely. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I just started back in 2013. I I got a nice camera and, uh, you know, I went to a lot of different uh, concerts as well, too. You know, Mm -hmm. friends, they work down at, uh, you know, the rickshaw stop. So I was always getting access there and meeting the artists that were singing and whatnot. So I really kind of homed in my photography skills at first during uh, uh, concert photography. You okay. Know, which was, all right. you know, you have to be pretty quick, especially right. with all the changing lights and whatnot. Yeah. So I'd say it was really kind of like, a, that was like my boot camp, I guess, in sort of a way. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, just kind of adjusting to all these super quick moments, you know, to get that right line and get that right photo as these lights are just flickering on and off. And um, the more I did that, I did that for about a year. And the more I did that, the more it, um, you know, the more I was able to take those skills, that quickness to the streets and really kind of... Uh, I don't know, how do you say it? Like maybe just kind of slingshot my camera in that direction and get a quick shot that was Mm -hmm. going to be gone forever. You're able to react. Exactly, yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, I just, you know, kept doing that more and more and more and more. You know, I kept seeing, I kept getting positive feedback from my work, um, you know, from friends, from different artists, you know, you should, you know, you should do this more. You should, you know, try that, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, all right. And uh, so eventually, like when I first got my first uh, real street photography camera, I uh, which I remember what was that? The X100s. Ah, okay, yeah. all right. It first came out. I tried to find it everywhere, and uh, I couldn't find it. So I called Portland, you know, like the Shutterbug up in Portland, and uh, I was like, "Yeah, do you guys have one up there?" They're like, "Yep." Um, I hey, hold it. I'll be there tomorrow. This. I was literally on Fisherman's Wharf, just bored. Like, what am I going to do with my day, you know? And uh, I called them up. They said that I was on a train that night. It was a Sunday. I was on a train that night at 9 p.m. heading up to Portland to get my first photography, <laughs> you know, little mini compact camera, whatever. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, I cruised up there, got there the next day, picked it up, shot around Oregon or Portland for a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I just fell in love with it. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's, just, it's kind of one of those things when you have that, you know, when... Not to be, uh, I don't know, whatever, but everything just starts clicking for you. you yeah, know? it's like you know you're this. You're meant to have this photo or this camera. Yeah, yeah. You know? And it's just, it's just like a definitely an extension of your arm. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, you know, after a while of doing that, photography is like you know just I have super crazy anxiety issues, so that's why I'm always on the streets, you know. And it's the only time that I really feel calm. <laughs> You know, like it's kind of like your safety safe. Exactly, you know? where I can all my anxiety is like kind of like, oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> you know, so it's like, but in my mind, it's like my zen. You know? uh, it's yeah, like where yeah, I can, yeah, yeah. I can center myself right there in the streets, being you know, you know, looking left, right, behind me, up and down, you know, whatever. Yeah. So people on the street may look at me like, who the hell is this guy? Uh-huh. But for me, in my mind, you know, it's uh, 
yeah, it's a calming, calming therapeutic experience. Good. The camera so, does work as a kind of a blockade. Mm-hmm. I got that same anxiety. I, I can relate to you fully. And it's it, it really does matter for a lot of photographers out there. Yeah, and I can imagine that helps you approach people. I mean, you you can get the shot. You can get in there and get the shot if you if you have that you know that zen like feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know that quality. I I do not possess that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could do that, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got to force yourself. So yeah, yeah, yeah you, just, do. you do. I mean, we all have our you down do. days, you know, yeah. and where we feel burnt out and everything. But, uh, you know, I guess I just like on my burned out days, I just kind of force myself to get out there and I kind of think about the end result, you know. Like now I have to be out there. It's not like, do I want to go out? Eh, no, but it's like kind of like I have to or else I'm going to die tomorrow. So, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I, I think we're all a lot, a lot yeah. of us shooters are just well, like that. You know, that's what that's what you run into when you have a passion for be it a hobby or even a profession. You mm-hmm. know, as they say, you know, make your love your work and you never work again. Right. Right. You know, it's just mm-hmm. if you don't have that desire to just go out and just walk the streets and shoot then you might not be in the right area. That's true. You know, if, if, you, if every so day true. you wake up and you're like, I don't want to go, eh, it might be time to look for another. Yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> the, you, you'll see it in the results. Yeah, you will. You, you know, you, you, will. Just, you just start taking shots just to take shots, yep. you know, and you'll, you'll see it in the results. I yeah. mean, it'll be crap. And that's the thing. Like when I'm first, like every day, like when I go out and I'll just take a couple like just bullshit shots just to kind of warm myself right. up. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. You know, and then after that, it's, you know, game on. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. uh, but just with my work and everything, you know, I mean, it just, you'll see a lot of like kind of emotion in there. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's just a lot of emotion from people. And, I, you know, it's just the way that I'm feeling that day or the way that I was feeling or, you know, something that I want to get out of, you know, out of me or whatever the case may be. You know, it's, um, so I kind of, my work is more based around emotion. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're trying to pull than, that kind of, that, sentiment into it exactly yeah 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 well now coming off of street and it's not to say that street's the only thing that you do you actually have you actually have a really great um you know portfolio of documentary work Hmm. to do so that's something i i want to talk about oh actually you know what before we jump into that i was kind of curious you said you were in portland for a while yep um that where you went to school uh i went to oregon state oregon state yeah for four years there in corvallis so uh Art school? Nope. I was an archaeologist. I That's archaeologist. where I was yes. <laughs> What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. I was getting to that. <laughs> yeah, getting into that. You know what, we're going to get to the documentary stuff shortly. Let's, let's go with archaeology because yeah. that should is... I, should I call you Indiana now? <laughs> <laughs> I never had a whip you know, or a gun. But, yeah. <laughs> Not yet. But Not yet. I got maybe in the tenderloin. Yeah. yeah. It's true. So archaeology. Yeah. So, ooh, yeah. Wow. What what kind of archaeology? Let's, let's, let's give a little insight here. Uh, just cultural archaeology i mean um so you're digging up bones so, or uh well more or less like uh we would um uh, so the re- i got into archaeology like i first got i was in welding you know mm-hmm. at the community college here and i'm like you know i don't want to do welding like uh-huh. this <laughs> you know so you know i want to go to oregon state i don't want to keep coming back out to you know drive 10 miles to school every day i just want to walk to school so i applied to oregon state got in and then uh um, yeah, I first majored in history and I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? And so, you know, I was able to like combine history and, you know, being more, uh, physical about yeah. stuff. And so, yeah. you know, I took up archeologist, uh, um, anthropology and whatnot. Yeah. And, um, I really wanted to do uh, underwater archeology. span I was like, oh. kind of my first love, uh-huh. but I hate Texas. No offense, but uh, <laughs> I hate Texas, so I didn't want to move down. To Corpus coming Christmas. in. Yeah, sorry, yes. Texas yeah. folks, but that <laughs> Austin is cool. But, they yeah, do not rep- yeah. yes, Austin is awesome. They do not represent the views of San GPX <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> go ahead. You told me to say that. No way. Yeah. Way to go, Jim. <laughs> Shit's going off the rails yeah, already. All right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so no, I'm just but yeah, underwater stuff. Yeah, then. underwater was uh, cool, you know, and I did that for a little bit. So you're looking for Atlantis, and what the hell? Uh, you know, Atlantis, I was looking for you know, just diving on World War II airplanes, yes. uh-huh. yeah, oh, yeah. Um, you know, it was fun, uh, it was good stuff. Like, um, you know, we were up in the uh, sound, the Puget Sound, and we were diving down there, and I mean, this water was you know, <laughs> it was cold, the Puget Sound, yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, you, you have like five feet of visibility if you're lucky. Uh-huh. You know? But yeah. that's where I learned. But uh, moving on from that, um, 
it was just, you know, it just really gave me a way to be out in the field, out in nature, being able to just kind of, uh, you know, it's just kind of a peaceful experience for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I just just gotten out of the military, out of the Marine Corps. And so uh, it was just really nice to be back in the field. It was nice to just, uh, kind of, you know, work with other you yeah. know, people that were kind of yeah. in the same thing. But I guess, like, I've always had that, like, kind of documentary uh uh, passion and inspiration, whatever inside of me. And mm-hmm. so within the last year, you know, I've kind of dived from, you know, more documentary work to than street photography. Okay. I, mean, I still love street photography. Don't get me wrong. You know, yeah. but, well, they're cousins. I mean, it, yeah, it's all yeah. under the same umbrella anyway. Exactly. And so I have a schedule now where, you know, I work four days on three days off and I'm able to like, just take these little mini trips to, you know, as far as I can go and come back, you know, mm-hmm. within the, those days. Uh, I just got back from uh, Nevada, and I was working with my old uh, fraternity brother out there. Like, uh, I joined like this uh, the cowboy fraternity, you know, the agricultural <laughs> fraternity, if you can okay. believe that. I'm very huh. far from that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've like got the most random resume. Future yeah, farmers of America, uh, there. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of like the brown sheep of the family, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I went there. Well, that's all right. <laughs> that's, what, that's why we got that big not we, safe we, for work. Yeah, yeah, we, go, we go many places too. So. Right, go ahead. Uh, but no, it was cool. It was cool. Um, you know, I was working with uh, one of my friends, uh, Mark Lundy, out there. He uh, let me come out to the Wine Cup Gamble Ranch. You know, just document their um, their lifestyle. You know, he's a cowboy out there. They, um, him and like four other guys. I really learned about like how they work on a ranch in the middle of nowhere and uh, mm-hmm. you know kind of what goes in and out of you know their daily jobs. I mean, they love their jobs, you know. They're on horses every single day. They're in the field every day doing you know doing what they love. So it's not even work for them. Uh-huh. You know, it's just like a uh, you know, it's just another day of going out and shooting on the streets for us, you know. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. the same thing for them, but um, how big's the ranch that they're that they were on? Do you know? Uh, I think it's like 1.1 million acres or something. It's pretty. Uh, that's big. why I wanted to ask a question. Yeah. 1. 1 million acres. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. But um, so yeah, just kind of been document or um, diving into more documentary type work, and uh, you know, it's just really, it's you know, just kind of for me getting back to my roots. You know, kind of what I've. It kind of seems like it's what I've always wanted to do, but I never knew it. Mm-hmm. Sort of thing. And uh, now that I'm there, you know, I'm just kind of taking off with it, and you know. Yeah, because I'm because I mean I'm, I'm I was trying to make this uh, build this bridge between archaeology and photography, mm-hmm. and it seems like you know archaeology is about is all about telling the story of the past. Yeah, and this moving to documentary is the same thing, only that you're telling the story of the present. That's the bridge, telling a story. At least I may be this may be a stretch. Mm-hmm. But that's the way I see it with you. You know, it's like it's like you want to tell a story, whether it's the past, you know, in, in digging up bones and artifacts mm-hmm. or the present, you yeah. know. And, and you said you you were in the art uh, anthropology too. anthropology. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. See, and that's it's the same thing. Telling the story of man. Yeah, exactly. And just, you know, I was a forest archaeology in the last national forest and. My job was literally just to walk into the walk in the forest every single day for you know miles on end and just looking for you know artifacts on the ground you know fifty year old uh, mining sites or you know Native American sites you know what have you whatever we came you know whatever we ran into we would document and so and it's kind of like the same thing with street photography I just didn't have a camera on me I had a GPS mm-hmm. you know but we're still looking for those hard to find. Yeah. artifacts and moments oh, yeah and whatnot. um yeah you know this anthropology thing is it reminds me of the urban urban studies that our uh, past guest pedro lanturion yeah yeah he, he had the, he did the same thing he were urban studies and how that related to you know street yeah he photography. was kind of making a connection yeah he's making that connection and, and, and urban bridging studies, that gap like yeah, you said well and, and urban studies is anthropology well is, i mean all of this that we're looking into and talking about is it it's with street, with documentary, with reportage, any of it, it's that kind of study of the human condition. That's right. You know, that's at its base foundation. Yeah, building a narrative, mm-hmm. building a narrative of the human condition, and that, and that that's what that's what docu- it, that's what street photography is about. But especially documentary photography, to me, that that's the next step for me. Yeah, you know, I, that I want to do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> no reason why you can't. Man. <laughs> hey, you live and you die. Yeah. It's what you, you know, do in between is yeah, where you have a decision. Right. Yeah, that's live right. Every day, like you're gonna die the next. Yeah. You know? uh-huh. Only 
here right. in America do we worry about work more than everything else? That's you just got to do it. Switch that up. Aren't we trying to shake things up anyway? That's right. We are for better or for worse. We are. Um, but as far as the project that you have going on, this kind of to me it seems like we were talking the other day uh, when we were walking around. We we met up over at Fisherman's Wharf. Mm-hmm. Um, took a little walk in a glass key photo. By the way, our sponsor. Yeah, I'm probably going to put that plug in about right here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we were talking about that sense of Americana. Yeah. Uh, me and you and yeah. Joe Aguirre were kind of sitting there talking about the Americana and, and looking for small town America, as you put right. it. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this this project that we've been kind of alluding to throughout this, do you have a name for it yet? Anything that somebody uh, can search? No. I mean, it's just kind of something that's just going to come to me in my sleep or, you know. Just come look I at my just, shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the name of it. That's, 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 shit. that's the working title, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. working title. It really entices people, you know? Street <laughs> exactly. curiosity. Perfect yeah. for PR. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a public announcement right there for Street PX. Yeah. Um, um, but it is a sense of Americana and looking at small town Americans, seeing people who are not, you know, they're not city dwellers, they're not, you know, jumping on a BART or. You, Life is a little bit slower in these areas. Mm-hmm. It's, it reminds me a lot of where I grew up in southern Illinois. It's farmland, you know. I remember looking at cornfields and wheat, as far as the eye can see. Where you're going is kind of more ranch style sounds. Well, just that one was. That I mean, one? I was uh, in high school, you know, just the years that you learn about life and, you know, your most important years growing up. I lived in Willits, which is, you know, two and a half hours north of here. It's only 5,000 people. You know, full of hippies and rednecks and stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I well, it's you know, growing up, it was a boring town. I was a skater in high school. It was just, it was just very boring. There was nothing to do. But now that I'm, you know, I'm a photographer, and now that I, I go back up there all the time, it's such a. I see that town has really opened up to me, and just kind of, it's so brand new for me. You know, all mm-hmm. these, all these different, um, uh, you know, areas that I used to visit as a kid and stuff now become something really like kind of historical for me. You know. My, yeah. my personal life and it so changes. i go back there yeah, yeah. It, totally you know i mean it, and now it's instead of like oh that's a barn cool whatever you know now i really see like the beauty in a lot of these different uh areas and whatnot you know it's really cool because a lot of the stuff is still there yeah or you know they're run down but they're still there you know which makes even right. more you know kind of cooler and all that but uh yeah well it's is uh yeah it's a really big inspiring little town for me you mm-hmm. know and uh mm. Uh, I'm looking to do like a book uh, about Willits, you know, about the area up there. And, I'll throw uh, a little love to yeah. hometown. Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely. You know, I love. You know, it's it's just a good good town. You know, full of uh, little people or little people. Little people, <laughs> not little people. <laughs> <laughs> Delete that. No, no, no. no, no, it. no. It's no. not little people. No. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Moments. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh shit! shit. Yeah, see, this is what happens. This yeah. is what happens. But it, but you're talking about people that are in. You know, they're not running through that daily grind, that ninety mile an hour grind. Right, right. You yeah. know, and it's just I'm not saying to take away that people living in cities and bigger towns are you know, they're not real people or anything like that. But you get to these smaller towns and. You know, they're just kind of they're just doing their everyday thing and uh whether it's working at a small store owning a little shop you know or generational out the ranch, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. you know it's uh i don't know for me it's just kind of like uh it's just a really good kind of place to be to mm-hmm. uh I don't even know how to say that. Just yeah. to kind of, you know, just to photograph and document. Yeah. And uh, my favorite time of the year is, you know, 4th of July where well oh, it's yeah. it's basically it still has like the rodeo there. It still has the street uh-huh. fight. Well, we call it the street fight, but it's really a street dance. There's always somebody in the. Uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of a historical thing. Everybody yeah. looks at the uh, you know the Kylie Daily fo- uh, police log. <laughs> you know the next day to see. Yeah, there's always that guy. <laughs> and, Everything uh, has that guy. See, seen a lot of my friends in there, but. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it just kind of comes with the territory and. Uh, we uh, and then you know we have the parade, the parade, but we have the rodeo for like two or three days, you know, and it's just a really cool way to where everybody comes back from wherever they live, and we just all get together, you mm-hmm. know. It's a really cool reunion every single year. Yeah, and then the parade, uh, we lock down Main Street there, and there's a parade for about a half a mile, and it's a uh, you know just this like I said the small town Americana parade with the waving the flags, you know, with the little kids, and you just walk and you see all your friends you grew up with. And, uh, you know, you just see like little, you know, just the little, uh, 
the you know the old school fire engines you know what have you you know Mm -hmm. right you know just a small town parade and it's just it's just i don't know it's just really cool i just i love that feeling i love being there Uh i love being able to document that yeah, and we and this this country is losing that too. You know, yeah, it really that, is. That's, that's yeah. the thing that's kind of disappearing now, and that's mm-hmm. it's a it's a great thing to start documenting. You know, that's what happens when populations explode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know, and urban urban <coughs> becomes more you know becomes more important. No, not necessarily more important, but it it becomes more prominent. You're prominent. Yeah, that's yeah a better more word. prominent. Yeah. yeah, you know, and uh, and you start to lose the Americana, the ranches, the small towns, and which things like actually, that. Yeah, which is a good kind of reel back onto the project. You know, you're yeah. actually. As of recording this, you just released the third part uh, of this project. Yeah. Um, now, before we, we get into it a little bit more, uh, where can people find this? So they listen. Uh, you can go to my website, which is uh, clucerophotos.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's C-L-U-C-E-R-O photos.com. And um, just right at the top there, you can view all my work. But you can also just click on uh, the word blog and one two, parts one, two, and three will... Uh, come up for you right there. Now, parts one. What is part one? Yeah. Just explain part one, those. Uh, part one was basically me leaving the city and, um, excuse me, going out to, uh, you know, right past Reno. I just started document. There was a really big lightning storm, and I got out, slapped a bunch of stuff on my camera that I didn't even know what the hell I was doing, <laughs> and somehow, some way, I was able to capture this uh, lightning bolt. I've never shot lightning in my life, uh-huh. you know, so, and yeah. I just got a brand new filter. It was adjustable, and I was just hoping for the best, but yeah. you know, as luck would have it, though, or fate, whatever, I was able to get a cool shot out of it. Uh-huh. And so, um, and then the rest of the that series for part one was just me, um, you know, just traveling along Highway 80 all the way to uh, Montello, which is northeastern Nevada, almost on the border. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. You know, it's about nine hours or whatever from uh, the city here. Okay. So. Um, you know, I just would stop and go, stop and go the whole way there, kind of capturing photos. Crashed in a uh, McDonald's parking lot, woke up, got to Montello at 9 in the morning, started shooting around. And, I'm, you know, my friend, he wanted to meet up around noon. So I'm like, I got a couple hours to spare. But, you know, what do you do? Yeah. Head to this only bar in town and start hanging out with the locals and just talking to them, learning about the history and whatnot. And hey, that's the best way to get in. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, Seriously. The, the nicest people in the world just talking to me about... Uh, just the history of like the area, uh, you know, met, you know, Barbara who owned the bar, met, uh, Jay who, uh, he's on, he's like in my series, he's the older gentleman, super nice guy who was, uh, you know, we talked about the military, about the army, talked about the Marines when I was in. He was a military guy too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He still carries his, uh, old army uniform from Vietnam in his truck. Hmm. And like, I went out there and just got a couple photos and I just coincidentally, you know, coincidentally saw that. And I uh, walked in and, you know, I just, I'm like, hey, you know, before I leave, I want to get a couple shots of you with your uh, uniform. And nicest guy in the world, you know. I mean, he's probably at the bar a little too much. But, you know, <laughs> it's a small town, you know, yeah, 100 yeah. people. Who yeah, cares? what else you want to you know? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so, I, uh, I don't know, it was really cool talking, you know, speaking with him and whatnot. And uh, was able to go out, or, you know, got a couple shots with him in his uniform. You know, I thought it turned out pretty well. Um you know, he bought me a couple beers. I mean, he's just a really, really nice guy, uh-huh. you know. And then, uh, you know, about four or five beers later, I headed out to the ranch <laughs> and <laughs> met, up with some, with, met up with my uh, friend Mark uh-huh. and um, just kind of started shooting around. This is the guy that you already knew, right? Yeah. From, yeah. From okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I just got out there. He introduced me to everybody. And uh, he was kind of teaching me about, like, kind of what they do, how they kind of somebody rides out to the uh, field where all the horses are they uh lead all the horses into the corral into the ropes where all the if you look at my work you'll see all the horses lined up on the ropes in this little corral and uh what they do is they'll uh the cowboy will like yeah i want to work with this mm-hmm. horse he'll uh you know mark will go ahead and rope that horse bring it out for that cowboy and then um you know whatever they change their uh you know their the shoes or you know they ride it the next day whatever they're going to do Mm-hmm. Uh, take it out to the field and uh so that was really cool it's really i really found it really interesting learning how to uh shoe a horse as well i've never seen that before in my life okay but, yeah did you do it uh, while you were there i mean no, i didn't do it no but uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I was taking photos but uh the it was, horse afterward right yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting you know and i mean like 
it's pretty pretty hard work i mean you're giving a horse a freaking pedicure you know <laughs> yes. i mean it's basically what you're doing they're called you know farriers right or huh? they're called farriers, farriers? yeah, yeah. Might the, be the people who do that oh because i've actually oh, oh. seen yeah i've uh. actually seen the, the uh, at Stanford they had the the barn yeah. you know the mm-hmm. horse barn and I, you can see these guys who are who are shoeing these horses all this fire and smoke going on and they're yeah. putting the, they're, you know they're putting these these shoes on these horses hot shoeing them yeah mm-hmm. hot mm-hmm. Fa- it was fascinating I remember having horses when I was a kid yeah. riding horses and yeah. we had you know we didn't have no multi million or a million acre ranch but you know we had a couple of kind of irritating horses that just hated each other but. yeah <laughs> i was around horses too you know follow, Were you really yeah you know follow my father to the track <laughs> oh <laughs> that's a, yeah man. champions yeah, right? yeah, champions. yeah exactly. yes yes the kind of horses that make you real yeah, poor or yeah. real rich mm-hmm. there's not that's really right. much gray area that's right <laughs> so the whole ranching that yes. was that was Part two, or is that, that's, is that part two? Or is that still- uh, yeah, part two is more yeah. about like uh, the ranch, kind of documenting the ranch like experience. what they do, you know, every yeah. day and whatnot. I wish I could have stayed a little bit longer because I wanted to go out to the field with them. How yeah. long did you get to be out there? Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, I left, I think, on like a Monday around 3 p.m., got there the next day. Uh, just stayed one, I was there one full day, and then the next day we went out. We just kind of hitched a trailer that he couldn't get earlier that morning uh, because of the rains were coming in. Mm-hmm. Shot a few photos, and that's what's. That's what part three is about is uh, my, you know, just kind of going out to the ranch shooting. Uh, you know, we saw a lot of goats, like over 200 head of goats on the way there. I mean, just like a swarm of them uh, just came out of nowhere. Like yeah. flocking over the road like you see yeah, yeah. in Europe. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, uh, I, yeah, it was really cool. And they're used, you know, to kind of keep the brush down, you know. And yes. Fights and yeah, they have their right, purpose, right. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but they, they were just telling me about the area, you know. Um, which is, I mean, it's just real beautiful. I mean, even though it's just like kind of like rolling hills and flat brush, you know, brown brush, it's still just a really beautiful, beautiful, like peaceful area that, you know, you just really understand why these cowboys are out there doing what they do because it's just, it's you're under the stars. It's peaceful. You don't have to deal with city folk or... No light pollution. Mm-hmm. No light pollution. Nothing, <laughs> yeah. you know. It's you and, you know, just a few of your buddies and horses. It's, yeah, it's a pretty cool life. Now, why did that connect with you? Um, Just... You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm will it? Huh? What's well, it? well, will it? Yeah, will it? I mean, that's what, it's what it sounds like to me. Having that kind of like small town upbringing and mm-hmm. being able to reconnect uh, Ameri- with that. Americana. Yep. Yeah. That's a you know you, you, your 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 experience with uh, will it and Willets. Yes. Willets. Willets. Yes. Willets. Yes. Willets. 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 I'm sorry. Willets. It's not plural, but it's got an S. <laughs> yeah, it's got an S. <laughs> and you know, it, it's it's Americana. Yeah. 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 To me, this. And so it's good. It's just really cool to bring those little, uh, you know, those moments that people would never see they hear about them you know they know about them but they'll never see them Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's kind of like with me and uh doing these little documentaries to me it kind of feels like like when i'm shooting concerts the greatest feeling for me was like being able to get backstage photographing the artists and the singers backstage you know and kind of bringing that aspect to their fans because i mean everybody can go online and see a thousand people of them you know or a thousand photos of them on stage right but being able to see those backstage moments it kind of gives you that kind of like holy shit this is awesome you know these are facts this is what they do you know yeah you know rock and roll artists you know they're just like us (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah well yeah they really are sometimes better or worse yeah Yeah. (laughs) so uh i really love capturing those those uh photos and bringing those to my audience you know it's just the backstage and Bring them in, bringing them into that world that they don't have access to, mm-hmm. like Jim Marshall, you know, shooting Jimmy and everybody, you know, yep. God, everybody else, you know, and it's, Lord, yeah, the doors. I mean, it was it's just it's a really cool feeling, and so being able to bring the small town to bigger America, I guess, yeah, is for me anyway. It's kind of like that same feeling, you know. Mm-hmm. It's uh, bringing this to them, you know. Yeah, vice versa. yeah. Where do you want to go with this? Like, are you stopping at this? Are you? focusing on doing a trilogy or do you want to do more parts and continue oh, this just as uh, a open-ended it's project? just open-ended yeah you know it's kind of where i'm going to focus more of my attention yeah uh from here on out you know but thing you know that life changes things change whatever yeah yeah you know i mean i'll still obviously hit the streets and everything but for the for my bigger projects it's going to be more documentary 
more small towns and, Mm -hmm. you know, just wherever, you know, and I'm always kind of the person where I can go to any little town, go to the bar, come out with a hundred friends at the end of the (laughs) night. (laughs) I've always been that, you know, that kind of person where, uh, you know, you just, I just talk to anybody. It just Uh comes easy for me. And which, I mean, you know, agree or not, the the truth is when it comes to small town America, especially like where I grew up, which sounds like a lot like where you grew up, the bar uh, is seriously the, the door, the entry into the place. I mean, Depending on the city you're in, you're not, you might not find the best of people, or uh-huh, you might yeah. also find the best of people. Yeah. It just depends. Yeah. But it's where the most sharing, the most generous people are going to be, and you know, alcohol notwithstanding. <laughs> well, that determines <laughs> whether everybody good or yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. it could go one of two ways. Yeah, it gets- but it, but it is a great a, a great entry into a town if you're looking at doing a documentary uh, on said town or on the people of that town. Mm-hmm. Um, so to our listeners out there. Just a little food for thought. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. this kind of reminds me, although this show is not about Casper, but your your documentary, the thing that you're you're getting ready to embark on the, with the Mississippi the River, River yeah. thing, is it, it kind of reminds me. It's that that yeah that you know it's that it's that um, part of America that's being lost. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, you know, it's disappearing. But it, even if not necessarily disappearing like the ranches and stuff, it's yeah, not mm-hmm. like the industry is just going to evaporate tomorrow. It's right. still going to be there you know eternally to a point but it's it's fading away from the uh the national awareness yeah mm-hmm. like right. you don't you don't think about right. ranches today you right. know in general society or urban society in particular you don't think about the river industry which brings your food to you mm-hmm. um you know or like you said the ranches or the farms that bring the food to your your, your table it's it's things that are easily overlooked and ignored. I, you, you make a great point because yeah. it's not. It's not that this stuff is going away. It's no, always we're no. always going to need trans the it's river thinning, transportation. But we're it's always going to be needed. We're always going to need the ranches. But with the urbanization of a, of the culture, basically, mm-hmm. you, you you kind of lose. You're very right. You kind of lose that, and it's important to document that. Yeah, I, I, I really do. I really think so. If for nothing else, in posterity, but just understanding uh-huh. is 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 a necessity. I believe more so today right. than it has been in quite a while. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, I, and I cannot wait to see your what you come out with with your Mississippi River project. Mm-hmm. That would be the, great. But it's about I, CJ. I, I have, yeah, but I said <laughs> I have seen what CJ has come out with so far, and man, I'm, I'm I really enjoy it. I, I was yeah, really loving you. that stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that's kind of re- really dear to your heart. And I'm like I said, I'm finally able to do it and just kind of take off with it. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, there's no limit to this thing, and. Uh, it's just, yeah, it just kind of inspires me every day. Just like, oh, you know what? Where do I want to go today or next week or whatever? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Just going to pop in real quick to throw some love to our sponsor, Glass Key Photo. This is San Francisco's premier analog photography store and a staple for many photographers here in the Bay Area. If you're looking for analog gear, repairs, film, old or new, amazing zines by local artists, or simply want some great company and the opportunity for some fun photo walks, this is the place to be. You can find out more information and upcoming happenings by following them on Facebook or Twitter by searching Glass Key Photo or visit their website at glasskeyphoto.com. Now, after five years in the colorful and historic hate district, they have relocated closer to downtown. You can now find them at 1230 Sutter Street. That's between Polk Street and Van Ness. It's a fantastic new venue offering a ton of space, breath of fresh air, I'm sure, for not only Gordon and Matt down there, but all photographers here in the Bay Area. Above all, while in San Francisco, be sure to visit Glass Key Photo and give a big hello from all of us here at Street PX. Segway travels. I know last year you went on one buku like mm. backpacking trip through. I'm going to say Europe, but were you limited to Europe? Did you go outside of Europe at the time? I wanted to, but I wasn't able to. No. Yeah. So uh, around mid or early 2016, you were doing some travels, um, which I definitely want to talk about. But it's the refugee camp. Mm. Yeah. Um, was that kind of your primary intent on going overseas, or were you? Did you yeah. just end up there? Oh, it was. No, no, that was my primary intent. Um, basically I, so I worked at, uh, I was a contractor at Google for a little bit, mm-hmm. but I was putting together this European trip as well at the same time. And coincidentally, there were these, uh, refugee, um, uh, groups like, um, IRAP, International Refugee Assistance Project, 
wish they had a shorter name. I hate saying that, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> IRAP? IRAP. Yeah, you uh, rap. <laughs> So, yeah, they came and they did a speech at uh, Google, you know, and I went to it. I was really inspired. I'm like, hey, you know, my name's CJ, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to Europe. You know, let's collaborate sort of thing. And they're like, okay, cool. You know, and they get, they put me in touch with some different people and whatnot. And IRAP is a group of basically lawyers that re- that uh, they hear different refugees' stories and they try to grant them asylum. Mm. Um, oh, wow. You know, so... American-based or international? Well, they're based in New York. Okay. But I think they might have some offices over there. Um, so it's a tight okay, end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, they put me in touch with three different refugees. Uh a gay man in uh, Amsterdam that I hung out with and uh, documented, just the nicest guy in the world. Uh, another ref- another person in, uh, S- she was from Syria. She was like 19-year-old rapper. And huh. she lives down in, um, oh, uh, Grenoble, Grenoble, something like that. Uh, yeah, Grenoble, yeah. Grenoble in uh, southern France there. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful little town that was like on the border of the uh like the french alps there skiing yes oh, yeah skiing is it's good beautiful. at that place yeah uh then there was another gentleman in uh, germany that was a uh that was a uh translator for the for the military but unfortunately i wasn't able to get to him i really wanted to i really would love to get that interview still but um so you know i flew flew in Am- or flew into stockholm cruised to amsterdam interviewed oh, nice. uh <laughs> you know the gentleman the uh, the next day and um yeah it just really hit it off he was just a really really nice gentleman really soft-spoken and uh, he was just telling me about his life about his hardships coming up how the uh how you know just people down they his boyfriend down there they like poured oil on his back and lit him on fire i mean it's really really terrible what they Yeah. yeah they do to people down there and it's yeah and so i think we lose sight of how violent things can truly be mm-hmm. yeah i mean it's it's yeah definitely a whole nother world but uh so after that i met up with some friends in paris and then i eventually moved uh, cruised up to uh, calais france for uh i worked up there for a week i was working with this um english group uh care for calais and um just a really nice set of volunteers mostly from england i met uh you know somebody from canada there and whatnot and um so that was like kind of my way in that was my way in not kind of but uh because i didn't know i've never been there i don't know the scene so you know i volunteered with this group um interviewed people and then the this cruise into the into calais and our job was basically to uh we would get stuff from our warehouse bring it out to the camp you know and then you know six seven of us would just get pass it out to different refugees that were lining up in the back of the tent or the truck or the um you know the box whatever. so this this was the actual refugee camp yeah describe yeah. it what was it like uh i mean it was basically it was a big giant shanty town you oh, know okay just it wasn't just syrian refugees it was just it was different refugees from all over africa from the middle east i mean there were over 30 different uh population or uh groups there uh-huh um the women and the children they were in separate camps but sometimes you'd see them walking around in the you know the male camp or whatnot, because mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately there was like you know rapings going on. Um, there was some really bad things happening, you know, at nighttime and whatnot. So yeah, um, so the conditions are pretty harsh. It was pretty pretty harsh. You know, I mean, there when I got there, it used to be like twice as big, but they they bulldozed the uh, like the southern end of the camp, and uh, then there was only the northern part. And I think. Oh God! I would say maybe about five thousand people when I was there, mm-hmm. and then after I left, uh, a few, you know, a couple months later, there was um, they bulldozed the whole thing. So I mean, the it's everything is gone, but there's still refugees coming there because it's kind of it's the shortest distance from there to England. So a lot right. of people are trying to like jump into the lorries, into the trucks, trying to you know stow away in there, uh, trying to jump on the trains, but a lot of people die from. Uh-huh. Way, yep. you know so the bulldozing um, but, is a manner to try and the are they attempting to remove the refugee camp at least the country um yeah and the people just keep coming and it exactly so it's a point of illegal immigration too. oh yeah, yeah big that's, time, that's, that's you know, why yeah and so they set up a they set up a uh a little while ago they set something up where you know these refugees they moved them basically to different parts of france but that until that um they had to register, you know, mm-hmm. and a lot of immigrants didn't want to do that. Yeah. Excuse me. And so um, 
they didn't want to register or anything. They just wanted to take their chances. So yeah, everything is just split, and it's yeah, it's just kind of a really bad situation. Yeah. But, um, when you were there, were there still individuals? Uh, I know that they were all of them were seeking asylum somewhere, mm-hmm. um, and I know at the time countries some countries are taking people in or not. Um, do you recall people being able to leave there, or was it just mostly arrival and just hope for the best? Uh, they would. I mean, people could come and go as I wish. Yeah. You know, it's not like they. Uh, it's not like they. You know, couldn't go. They were like in jail there or anything. People could come. No, no, no. I mean, as far as like um, trying to go to other countries like America, we were accepting refugees, or Australia was accepting refugees, mm-hmm. or so forth. And I know that there's kind of a, a process in place. Oh, yeah, um, did yeah. they have anything like that established there at the camp, or did they have uh, to leave the camp to be able to do it? The yeah, it was just the camp was a free for all. Yeah, you know, yeah. they didn't have anything. They you know before the Brexit thing, they were talking about you know taking the kids the children because i mean i was there was children all around there riding their bikes around there uh 10 year old kids you know significant population of children huh? oh yeah oh yeah tons that were just that came up there with other kids that made their way how would you like if you were to estimate the population of that five thousand? how many would you say were like women and children uh i don't know yeah Yeah, i don't know how many women there were because i never we never went over in that area um children i mean god I don't know, maybe over a hundred or something. Just from the male side that you were on. From from what I've seen, yeah. yeah. Hmm, okay. But I mean, there could have been more. There could have been less. I just that's kind of right. I'm just curious to kind of give the, our listeners a, mm-hmm. a, a a vision. But the people, uh, the people. I mean, even though it was just like a really bad shanty town, you know, mm-hmm. just horrible living conditions. You know, there was like four or five people to just like a little box, like an eight by eight box. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you were lucky, you were able to get like a camper van that were that was out there. Yeah, just randomly. And um, but these places, they had like some of the best food I've <laughs> ever had in my life. Oh my! Isn't that God. always the case? Hey, yeah. food comes from the heart. Yeah. It doesn't come yeah. from money. It yeah. was. I mean, you don't need a tablecloth in there. Cloth then. <laughs> yeah. They had some of the best food in these little places that were set. You, know, you pay like five american dollars you know whatever it is in euros and it's just like the, you get so freaking much food yeah. it's just like the best I, i'm like i wanted to go there just to, for the food you know um and uh but it was cool you know and there were little shops there were i mean it was i always got red bulls every morning paid a couple bucks for a red bull uh-huh. so did they have you know? any like food short- i mean i know we were talking about food mm-hmm. um but was there like any as far as food coming in, water, uh, was yeah. there any troubles with that? All or it, seemed, it sounds like... No, the only the only problems was the uh, like the bathrooms were terrible, terrible situation. There was oh, yeah. shit literally overflowing in these things. Make and truck so, stops look like five-star oh hotel. Oh, God, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> God damn yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, uh, it just, was, I just wanted we, to put we, that we, image in people's yeah, heads. Yeah, because we went from food, good food to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, the food's got to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see the segue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, what thing? Yeah. But uh, no, but I mean, so I mean, that was that was pretty much the, like the pretty terrible. Now, what what kind of images were you getting out of this yeah. camp? Uh, so images, it was it was kind of difficult to uh, bust out my actual, you know, like a yeah. Well, I bet that was tricky. Yeah, because I don't want to be sneaky, you know, and piss people off. Yeah, and, you know, because a lot of refugees they would. Uh, they don't want their they don't want their face on any kind of social media or anything. Yeah, they don't want their photos anywhere because it kind of help you know, you know they don't know who's looking at this and they could be identified. Like, okay, yeah, you know, so they don't want that. So I would actually have to kind of break all my rules of being you know candid, and I'd have to ask you know like hey you know, yeah. kind of lift my camera up like can I get a photo sort of thing, and they'd be like oh, okay or no 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 yeah. And I was like, all right, you know, so I was, you know, had to be very respectful. So a lot of my, most of my shots were of buildings and living conditions, but Mm -hmm. I was able to get a few, uh, you know, a few different uh, shots of actual people. Yeah. Situations. I know, I know you, you're into emotion and capturing emotion. Were you able to do that when you were with, with a few images of the people that you were? Yeah. Like one of my images is, uh, this gentleman, right? Or I mean, this gentleman where he, uh. It just really shows like the really bad living conditions that they're in, you know, water on the ground, uh, the propane tanks, you know, just kind of lying around with a, you know, a trailer and whatnot. Uh-huh. And he's just kind of sitting on the bench, 
his, you know, feet, you know, his feet and his arms, just, you know, everything just kind of really tightly wound up with his head into his uh, arms and legs. You know, it's looking like a fetal down. position, but seated. Yeah. Feet, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that was one of my favorite shots. Well, it was my favorite shot that I got. And it just kind of, for me, it just really shows what these people do every, you know, have to go through every single day. And, uh-huh. you know, from what I'm know, looking at, I'm seeing the water that's coming in. I'm just flooding. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is right in front of this gentleman's shop, I'm assuming, yeah? No, it's just, no, it's just where he's It's just at. a kind of area where uh, I think there was a... Uh, like a wash station on the oh, right because uh, they have okay. like wash stations everywhere around there. Yeah, you know, just like um, makeshift uh, sink, you know, elongated sinks where they do their laundry and where they get their water and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So, Was it important to you to capture that emotion? In oh that my camp? god, yeah. I needed, yeah. you know, I just needed something to just kind of encapsulate what you know, just the the you know the the atmosphere of that area yeah. was all about. And I, for me, that one sums it up perfectly. Yeah, you know of what they have to deal with every single day. Was there any individuals from the camp that you remember that kind of you know bored themselves into your memory? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I unfortunately, oh no, actually his name was Muhammad, uh, a really really nice guy. You know, like every night me and my friends we'd go out to the bar, you know, and drink, and uh, he would show up. And like the I was there for one week, and then I came back, and I was there for another week. But the first week I was there, I mean, he was always hanging out and stuff, and I thought he was a volunteer. <laughs> he, I, he spoke perfect English. He had like barely of an accent, but he spoke perfect English. He was wearing really, really nice clothes. So you know, I'm just like, hey, you know, whatever. You're so volunteer. You, you volunteered. I just assume he's like, no, I'm a refugee. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> really? He's like, yeah, man. I came from here. This is my story. I was like, oh wow. And I would always see him, and you know, in the camp, and um, you know, we'd always just talk and chat about little things. He'd ask me about America, and I'd ask him about his country and whatnot, and uh, just. He's just a really, really nice guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would just tell me about his, what he would do, you know, kind of like his daily routine. And it was kind of amazing because sometimes they would, uh, there were these groups, these charter buses that would come out and actually bus refugees out to different places around France so they could actually see the culture, you know, and see different areas. So kind of free, like field trips, Uh you know, so... And that was all from within the camp that they would set these <coughs> situations up, or was this external? It was external. Okay. Was yeah. UN or just the local government or privateers? I, I, I think it was just privateers, just private. Um, uh, I don't mean to go all yeah. piratey like <laughs> privateers, no, no. Yeah, but yeah. I'm assuming that's the word. It's just individuals. Well, let me, let, me, let me just clarify one thing. These people who are in the camps, were they there, were they in the country legally? No, mm-hmm. oh, so, so everybody so, was illegal. Yeah, so everybody was illegal. So, but they were able to take them out to these camps and yeah, you know, and I mean, Free take, kind of take, go take, take them to these uh, yeah these yeah. explorations without yeah worried I mean, about getting captured by whatever the French version of INS. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's actually a good point. But yeah. The I mean the uh, they were all there. Um, the uh, even the French police they were there. Um, yeah. As well too. Okay. And, I'll, I'll in getting into that here in a second, but um, it was just people, privateers, whoever, volunteers, whoever, you know, just giving these people just kind of some shed of humanity to get them out of their uh-huh. these shitty ass conditions. You yeah, know, and yeah. I mean, this year looks like know District that, Nine. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, you know, yeah. just basically letting people know, dude, you know, we actually care about you. Mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um. So that was cool, but then. So I went after that. I went around. I inter- did my interview with the other lady. Cruised around France, or I mean, cruised around um, Europe mm-hmm. and whatnot for about another uh, three weeks, and then I came back, um, back to Calais. And um, when I got there, there was like a lot of like kind of civil unrest going on. Like the first day I was back, it was really really foggy day, and uh, the Claire, who was like the kind of the leader of the uh, who's in charge of Care for Calais, I was out there with her, and she's like, you know, get your camera out. When, uh, and what was going on was it was really, really foggy that day. And so a lot of the refugees were jumping the fence. They were kind of, uh, you know, like the tr- they were trying to get into trucks. They were trying to get into cars. You know, uh, they were trying to do anything they could to, to get, a, you know, through the border. And, so um, using that fog as an advantage. Exactly. And so the French police, uh, who are always there, 
they uh, they came out and they started uh, shooting little kids with like bean bags. Okay. They were gassing people, you know, trying to keep them. Which back that can be not. mortally. Yeah. Like that can kill people. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I know it's not intended to be, but it can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it was really, really fucked up what they were doing to these. You know, they were targeting targeting little kids, and yeah, it was just, it was really bad. And like when I was going over, we had to take the back way this time, and I could just see like all the puffs of you know smoke of tear gas and everything. We finally parked and we all ran up there and um, it was kind of at the tail end and everybody was kind of peaceful, just kind of facing off with each other. And if you look at my website, you know, you'll be able to see that just kind of that face off with the little kids, with Uh adults, with, you know, the French police and whatnot, Um, which is crazy with the French police. I mean, yeah, they have a job to do. A lot of guys are dicks there, you know, because they're sick of these refugees and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the from going out and. You know, going out to the bars and like we were just talking about, that's where you learn a lot about people. They, uh, you know, one hour, you know, they're like, yeah, fuck these refugees and blah, blah, blah. And next thing you know, they're talking about, you know, a couple beers later, you know, they're just like, man, I hate what I do, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And I, I just, you know, mm-hmm. just wish I didn't have to do this. Yeah. So it's just kind of like really Is that flip. regret. Yeah. Yeah. And so at first they look all tough, but then you get a few beers in them and they're just like, they just... Poor. Yeah, wow. they're like, fuck, this sucks. I don't want to do this, but I have to. There's yeah. so many narratives to follow in this whole, in this whole thing. Man. It is, yeah, because mm-hmm. you you can look at it from the viewpoint of the refugees, to from the viewpoint of the police, from and the civilians, yeah, from the, from the, yeah, and from the viewpoint of uh, the care. military. I mean, yeah. you had yeah. Marines in your background, so you have a perspective that is going to be different than a civilian, yeah. right? You know, I mean, how, oh, yeah. how did yeah. that play out for you as far as looking at the way that these people were treated or at least the conditions that they were living in while at the same time looking back on your history as a Marine being somebody that fights to uh, establish a better life and a better world for people? Uh, I mean, it's... At least that's the intention, of course. Right, right. I mean, I just, uh, I guess my military background came into it. It was more about protecting myself, you yeah. know, because you never know. But that's the way it, yeah. 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 So it's more on the defensive. It's prime and, issue, um, yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes people would get pissed off, and so you just have to be a little more defensive about things, but you have to show that, you know, you're kind of in charge, mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And, like, because if you show fear, you show weakness, and people are just going to run all over you. Right. right. But I can so see you the, can't do that. But I can see the correlation between what you were just saying about the, the French police and getting a few beers in them and them admitting yeah. that guilt that they feel. I mean, I'm sure while you're in the military, you had situations that came up that afterward, or if we got a few beers into you, more than we already have. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. the, these things, these, these human emotions are going to come up, and then sometimes you have a job to do. Mm-hmm. Well, fortunately for me, I was between wars, you know, so I never had to go over there and see that. Oh, you were? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, so I didn't really get to experience any of that or anything, you know, whatnot. But, yeah. you know, I mean, I've, I've always been, you know, I've always had a, you know, good head on my shoulders, you know, and for the most part anyway. <laughs> we all like to think that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, let me uh, crack open another beer. But uh, Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the Stella is flowing. It is. It These is. guys are imbibing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm the only teetotaler around here. We'll, we'll get something out of both of them. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't let Jim fool you. He's already took back three shots of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, what are, you, what are you telling that for? <laughs> Um, Some guy, the guy, got to loosen up, doesn't but, he? Yeah. It's true. It's true. But, but yeah. I've, you know, I've always had that like empathy uh, for different groups and cultures of people and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just the way that I was born, and you know, I mean, the way that I was brought up, yeah. and uh, just having respect and not, you know, trying to learn, and you know, instead of just flipping off right off the bat yeah. about people that I don't know about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, and that's unfortunately what's happening a lot of times today, where. People don't know anything. They see a word and they don't read something, and, you know, and so they just flip out. And it's people can't be that way. Yeah. You know, you, it's just you have to be understanding of different groups and cultures. And so we're in a fo- volatile era. Yeah, well, I'm gonna say that's the foundation of a good documentarian. Yeah. yeah. You know, you have em- to, empathy. Empathy. You have to, and you have, have to, to separate. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if you get too vested, that's when yeah. <laughs> the popping off can become yeah. very, very probable. Yeah. Yep. So. um yeah, I would, I would like to go back. Um, I was going to ask, is it still is it still active? Yeah, I mean, there's still people in that area. I mean, there's a lot of kids going on going there. And then Brexit happened, and now 
that kind of screwed things up quite a bit because now they're not taking anybody. But things could have changed since now and then. Mm-hmm. But for last I heard, because of the Brexit, they're not taking anybody, any kids in. So a lot of people got screwed over that way. Um, what yeah, I heard is like, Ju- go ahead. Jude Law, actually, he would come down to the camp sometimes. Oh. And uh, he actually got to know one of the kids. And I think he adopted the kid, actually. Really? Uh, got him out of there. And then I saw uh, one of the guys from, uh, what is it called? Black Eyed Peas. One of the guys from oh, there. Yeah. He came out one day and uh, he was just kind of cruising around. It was the second time he came out and he was just kind of learning more and more about him. And the people, Claire, who was in charge of Care for Kelly, she was touring him around. And then, like, he was literally standing next to me, um, you know, just talking about you know learning about and it was kind of funny because like these refugees they totally know who they are who oh he yeah is. yeah you know um, so the thing about american culture somehow uh, it spreads elsewhere yeah. yeah and so as soon as he walked by everybody got their cameras out and they got their selfies and whatnot <laughs> yeah. and, and that's another thing you know and well he uh, i'm like hey man you want to help us give out clothes you know he's and he just looked at me like the hell why would i do that you know i was like <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> philanthropy only goes so yeah, far. So yeah. far. Really? Hey, <laughs> yeah. Still, money still goes a long yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, anyway, he. Uh, God, I wish I could remember his name. Um, I was thinking, Will yeah, I am? But that Will I am? That's oh, it. Well, he's yeah, from the Fugees. That's yeah, from the Fugees. Oh, the Fugees. Yeah. What did I say? Black Eyed. You said Black Eyed Peas. Yeah. He's from the Fugees. No, no, he's in Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm thinking Wycliffe Jean. You were thinking yeah, Wycliffe yeah, Jean. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. So Will I Am. So Will I Am uh, came out, and uh, yeah, he was just kind of um, touring around, checking things out and whatnot. Um, and then it just got a little too crazy because all the refugees just like just bombarded, like hundreds of people just came out and just got selfies with him, and you know whatever. And, yeah. Uh, he just. They brought the limo. Or I mean, not the limo, but the truck up. And yeah, just say limo. Yeah, no, no, no limo. But he got the he got out of there because it was getting a little too it was, crazy. Yeah. Well, it can yeah. also be and, dangerous. Too. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. And then we had to close up the truck that we were giving clothes out of because, you know, there was a good case that they could just bum rush you and just start grabbing and going. You know, mm-hmm. so we didn't want to deal with anything. We just locked everything up and. Uh, so with good intentions, Will I Am came in and fucked everything. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. joking, but at the same time, truthful. Yeah. It's yeah. the nature of celebrity. Exactly. So um, that was, I don't know, that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would like to go back sometime and, uh, you know, just kind of see how it's changed mm-hmm. and whatnot and just kind of interview people and kind of see what they think, you know, now that it's it's kind of dimmed down or, you know, simmered down now, mm-hmm. but it's still, there's still an influx of people yeah. coming in. Well, no, in, in previous episodes, I, I, I'm not sure which episode it is, but we'll put it into the show notes. We had an interview with Wasim Al-Badri, um, uh, I think sometime last year, who was a refugee. He mm-hmm. originated from a refugee camp, dealt with very similar conditions as to what you were just talking about. Um, I remember his story of, of acquiring a camera uh, by trading out some button-up shirts and maybe a pair of pants or something, but he had no film. And he was just running around shooting. So I mean, but but having that type of uh, interest in documenting the situation that if, if for our listeners out there, if you go to CJ's website, which we'll we'll bring up again here in a moment, he's got these images from uh, the camp, and there, there's a sense of reality uh, is the only word I can really think of that that emanates from these images. And I don't think that you can really, I mean, obviously we can't understand or fathom that type of a situation without being there, but these images definitely help um, build that, that, that narrative. Um, and I, I definitely recommend anybody out there to go take a look at this. That's what I liked about what you said, the sense of place that, that, that these images gave you. Yes. You know, it's just, it, it, that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's the basis of a great, great narrative. But now coming off of the refugee camp, that was the that was kind of like the preemptive start of your travels in Europe. It looks like you continue to travel Budapest mm-hmm. and um, Rome, Rome, and some other. Yeah, like how long did you get? Was it just kind of like staying for a day in each of these places, or were you just training through? It was just it was a couple of days. So yeah, I mean, it was just trying to hit as many places I uh, wanted to, you know, that I could and whatnot. I stayed like a week in Budapest, but fortunately it was raining half the time that I was there. So yeah. of course it would be. Yeah. Could only do so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's like the city that I always really wanted to go check out. But um yeah, I was able to explore quite a bit there and definitely would like would like to go back. But um yeah, the rest of the trip was more about street photography. 
and um, okay. you know whatnot. And so I mean, it just I like to go back and hit places that where there's not like a million and one tourists. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's just you know it's my second time over there and my first time that I was able to travel around. So I just wanted to hit the spots that I always wanted to hit. Yeah. You know, Venice was beautiful. I really loved photographing in Venice. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and just, you know, I used to be a bartender, and God, the, some of this bar that I wandered into one night, they just, I don't know, they uh, let me behind the bar, and I started slinging drinks. Wait, it wasn't the famous <laughs> bar, was it? No, uh, I don't it, think it, so. Okay, it was oh, just okay. dive bar. Yeah, it was just some random dive bar, oh, okay. you know, and uh, I said, like, yeah, I'm a bartender, I'm a photographer, blah, 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 and, you know, how one thing leads to another. Uh-huh. And, uh, so you pretty much Bill Murray the situation, just, like, showed up and was like, let me, I got this. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Oh, I got photos, you know, thank God, because I was like, yeah. and yeah, thank God fantastic. My, thank God my host let me stay there till 7 that night. Because <laughs> the next day, because I was dying. I was freaking dying. I know, yeah, I know Venice can be overrun with tourists, but you can oh, yeah. find some great uh, some great times, especially, you know, especially if you're staying on the island. Or, you know, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. If, you, if, you're, if you can just after hours, man, it's just fascinating. Mm-hmm. How were you doing that? Like, photography. Were you staying with people that you knew, or did no. they have like an Airbnb type yeah, of service? I was Airbnb in it the okay. whole time. Yeah. So it's like legitimately Airbnb, but there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was just Airbnb it. the whole time I was in Europe, except the last time that I went to Calais. First time I went there, I was staying in a uh, hostel. I don't uh-huh. recommend that place. It was disgusting. <laughs> and yeah, uh, there's movies based on that. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the second time, I had enough points where I could like. Um, I uh, had enough uh, hotel points, and I stayed at the Holiday Inn, which is Ooh, you know swanky. a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> Not by much, but you know, it was, <laughs> no. it, you know, yeah, yeah, it was much better. I didn't have uh, you know random pieces of hair on my pillow, you know, <sighs> mm. or roach, roaches posing for you. you know, like, hey, that's your friend yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but so that Airbnb was kind of your main ticket. Yeah, there. yeah, you know, and you meet really, really nice oh, yeah. people and whatnot. Yeah, you yeah. know, everybody is super kind. Uh huh. Um, that's the thing that you, when you travel, you, you don't really think about that aspect, but there, there's that social structure to it of being able to meet people who, I mean, everybody's kind of the same everywhere mm-hmm. with mild differences. And yeah. I mean, as long as you're a moderately outgoing person, yeah. grab yourself a Euro pass, you know, uh-huh. and dial into the Airbnb app and just rock on. Yeah. You know, back in before, because I, I, I went to Europe before Airbnb existed. Mm. So you would, that, 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 when I did that, I would be on a train, go to a train station, see who was renting rooms and do that. You oh, know, couch surfing. Yeah, yeah, just oh, yeah, do yeah, like yeah. couch surfing type thing. And it was fantastic. You got to meet yeah. so many people. They would tell you where to go. And, you know, mm-hmm. you learn yeah, so you much. Learn so much. Right. Yeah. 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 Every, yeah. We could buy, you know, I mean, they, there's always that kind of that adage, don't buy gear, buy plane tickets or what mm-hmm. have you. Buy yeah. truck. I, I definitely swear by that. I yeah. Mean, oh, yeah. You, you yeah, could spend, yeah. You, we could spend $1,500 on a new camera, but honestly, if this, the camera you already have is working, fuck that. Uh-huh. Don't buy a plane ticket and just... 15 20 50 dollars you know whatever it is to stay somewhere and just 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 roll through a country yeah yeah Yeah. and learn about the people talk to the people yep yeah you know i know in in street we always talk about oh you know don't interact and stuff and Mm -hmm. that's for the shot you're right Right. that's different than getting to learn about a culture and opening up your horizons that's right yeah Yeah. i mean it's so i i I missed totally missed a beautiful opportunity to do some great street shooting and family shooting when I went to Istanbul, mm-hmm. and these people were, these people were inviting me into their homes to talk to them, just sitting yeah. down and talk to them about America, about whatever. And now I think, God, the shots I could have gotten because these people were, they were totally down for getting, you know, getting their photos taken. Yeah, you know, they were totally down for it. But at the time. I wasn't doing that, you know. I, I really wasn't into that. Yeah. Hindsight is a yeah, bitch. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So <laughs> man, I, I, you know, what you would, I what mean, you're doing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what they were doing uh, in the refugee camp when I was there. These little fifteen year old kids were inviting me and my friends into their trailers, and they wanted to know about America. What was it like, you know, or where, uh, you know, what was it like in England with the people be- with me? Uh-huh. Uh huh. We were. I was listening to their stories because they wanted to go to, um, you know, they really wanted to go to school. But the Taliban was preventing them right. to go to school. You know, right, they wanted right. to be engineers and this and that. And so, by the power of Facebook, you know, that's how him and his uh, little his roommate, whatever that they're friends now, that's how they met. And um, over Facebook, like you know, there's like a closed group or something where, you know, who's going, who's going to make the trek to France and blah blah blah. 
So somehow they met in the middle and they trekked their way up with everybody else to um, uh, to France, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, they left their family behind and this side. And that's this thing about like what we see is only what the media tells us, right? You know. And depending on you know, unless you've been there, then it's a narrow field of view. Exactly. They have no idea what's going on. They just put everybody as a whole in the same basket, which is bullshit. You know, yeah. these people, all they wanted to do was, all they wanted to do was go home, see their family, mm -hmm. but they don't have a home to go to anymore, yeah. you know? And so it's, they have to do the next best thing for them, mm -hmm. you know, which is migrate to a different country, yeah. you know, to family members, live with family members. Most people can't relate to that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's easy to see on the news and hear, you know, mainstream media talk about refugee camps in a... Uh, <sighs> Well, in the yeah. context of illegal immigration or whatever, that, yeah. you know, they, yeah, that's everything what I mean. is thrown into that bowl. Yeah, you know. it's just all in the yeah. same base, yeah. but it is, right. it's so mm -hmm. convoluted and, and, and right. complex. Right. And whenever you consider the fact that, you know, you don't have, you don't have a home, you don't have a, like, not just a house. I'm not talking about a house or land or any of that bullshit. I'm talking about a country. Yeah. You don't have anywhere to go. No. And you, you, you can't just, like box everybody together like with a couple of extremists and then an entire population right. with it yeah. because these are human beings yeah i mean it's the same thing here you know i went to go photograph the uh ann coulter rally over in berkeley mm -hmm. you know and um yeah that's one of the things i mean i love photojournalism you know it's what i would have loved to be doing but unfortunately it's you know nothing's paying right now yeah, right everything a, is saturated yeah. so you know i mean um so i'm just do what I do, hopefully get my work gets kind of noticed, and it has. Yep. Yeah. And so um, when I went and shot that uh, rally, I mean, it's just it's just so crazy seeing just kind of like both sides, how the tension in the air was just so thick. I mean, I was there chatting with like Nazis and uh, people with like Hitler tattoos and swastikas on their arm. Uh -huh. You know, the only reason they would chat with me is because I wore my shirt, you know, that had a Marine Corps emblem on there. Uh, okay. So it was kind of my little spy, you know, being <laughs> spying, you know, kind of my get out of jail free card and whatnot. Yeah, you they, know? And, they probably would kick my little butt, wouldn't they? <laughs> I mean, but having to, like we were just chatting about, having to separate yourself from your own emotions and your your ideals and whatnot, you know, uh -huh. I, I wanted to chat with them. I wanted to see why they were here and what was going on, you know, I wanted to do this and that. And it was kind of funny because when I was, I was speaking to the uh, wife of one of them, one of them, and uh, she was talking to me like in a way that she shouldn't have been talking to me. You know, she was like, "Oh yeah, uh, you know, so oh you're in the Marine Corps? Oh okay, you know, kind of standoffish." But the more we spoke and the more I, I kind of engaged, the more she kind of opened up, opened up a little more. You know, but it was like. My husband's looking at me right now. I can't talk to you, but I'm talking to you. Even though he was like from me to you. Yeah. He was yeah. listening to the whole conversation. So she was approaching it with, uh -huh. with heavy fear in a way. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it was just, I really, I found that aspect more interesting than just chatting with these guys. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. seeing the body language yeah. and the way that they're exactly. approaching it. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and like just this giant person of a man, you know, I'm like, hey, would you mind if I got your shot? You know, the guy with all the tats. He's like, yeah, I would mind, man. Sorry. I'm like, cool. All right. Uh -huh. You know, and that was it. You know, I didn't. Yeah. He might be in the background of a few of my shots, but I, I didn't do, I didn't want to start trouble or anything. No, no, you know right. I mean? right. No. But Unless they don't have their hoods, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, like, you know, I was there with uh, Dwayne and everything, and, you know, there were some nice people that I met, you know, but at the same time, there were not everybody. I'm not going to pigeonhole everybody. No, 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 no. like that. You know, yeah, no, of course, but. Um, there was a lot of people like that. A lot of people came to fight. A lot of people were ready for battle in like full on uh -huh. combat gear and stuff. But yeah. a lot of people were there because, um, you know, because they're they wanted they were you know conservatives. What they and that the thing is, you know, a lot of that conservativeness is kind of going a different direction now mm -hmm. with this whole even even liberal is going. You know, I mean going to the right, going to the left, you know, there's a lot of extremists happening right now. And mm -hmm. personally, my point of view, both sides like that are just jackasses, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's this bad. I just watched this piece uh, my friend posted the other day where this black man who's been going, who's been hanging out and interviewing the people from the KKK for the last 30 years. Right. Where, and he's changed a lot of people's mentality to, you know, take the robe off. 
and mm-hmm. he has and it's yeah i think that's the way to do it personally you know yeah. engage with your quote-unquote enemy or you yeah. know the that type you know right. like learn about that it's a sort of diplomacy you know? in a way yeah, like exactly. to try and uh, unmask yeah it, have respect to uh you know have a respect for kind of like I'm not saying respect what they feel. No, right, right, right. But I'm just Mm-mm. saying have the respect for something that they think is important to them, where they where, will, where you will get that respect in return to see, you know, from them, like this is how I feel. You know, mm-hmm. meet in the middle well, somehow. Well, somewhere. it's like the Vice thing, the the Vice video that came out recently, yeah. um, and we're in Charlottesville. Yeah. And Ale, uh, I, unfortunately, I can't remember her last name right now, but she was the um, correspondent that was involved, and that's what she did. She she, you don't let your feelings and your emotions and your comments, you know, come out. Biases. Biases. Yeah. 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 Whenever you're you're documenting something like this, you have to come at it completely neutral, yeah. mm-hmm. regardless of what your feelings are, because the moment that you announce whatever your feelings are. Either a wall is going to happen. Right, yeah. right. It's just That's, the nature of it. You're going to lose all your credibility. Every bit yep. of it, and yep. and regardless of how legitimate that credibility is, yep. it doesn't. It's not relevant in that moment. Right. You're trying to get this story and trying to to shine a light on whatever Cervantes like monster that you're dealing with, mm-hmm. if that is the case, whatever your your project is. But by by holding and withholding that that opinion, you can gain a lot more access mm-hmm. and. If your intention is to be able to show something that is ugly or evil or whatever the opinion is, leave the opinion at home, show what it is, and then go home and scream in a mirror. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but the main thing is, is create the project, create the video or photography, show it to the world, and then be angry. Journalism yeah. 101. Yep. Yeah, yep. exactly. It is. So, yeah, and uh, with journalists, yeah, you really do have to stay neutral with that. And yeah. It's, sometimes it's tough. You know, I wanted to knock out a lot of people. Uh, but, yeah. I, I you bet know, you Dwayne wanted to, too. Yeah. Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Newton. Yeah. Dwayne, Dwayne Newton, Newton was yes. up as guest of the show earlier. Yes. But, you know, and... Uh, and I could picture the two of you dotting many a eyes. Yeah. You know, I, was, I was watching Dwayne, you know. He was... There was, uh, you know, a group of one... Some kids and then another, you know, some... The, uh, the Supremacists. Oh, yeah. The... Uh, you know they were kind of going at it, and Dwayne previously was chatting with one of them, and uh, the guy who's being vocal to this group, he was he was getting ready to go into the military, into the army, to be a warrant officer. After the match, you know, Dwayne went up to him and was like, "Hey, man, you can't be doing that because the military is going to see this. They're going to see photos. They're going to see you yelling. So unless you want to keep, unless you don't want to go into the military, you know, then I keep your mouth shut, basically." Uh, yeah. And he's like, "You know what? You're right." Yeah, you're right, and he didn't pipe off after that. Yeah, but one of my new next projects that I want to do is uh, actually get back with my old unit in the Marine Corps. Oh, I no was, shit! Yeah, oh I was hell work, yeah! Working with the third, I was am tracker basically uh, in an amphibious tanks. I was a crew chief on one of those. Excuse me, and uh, you know, I just I really want to go back down to San Diego, kind of get to see how the base has changed, see how everything has changed. Um, try to get out to the field with them and just mm-hmm. kind of just do a little mini doc on them. Now, when when were you in the military? <coughs> what year? I, I went in April 95 and got out July 9 uh July 99. So it'd, be extended. Inter- it'd be interesting to see not only how the equipment has changed but how the people have changed. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you know that and that would be something uh, that's, interesting. Yeah, the new definitely. recruits, what they, what these people are like now, how they're different mm-hmm. from when you were back in the you know, especially the change with you know, with the politics. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, the, yeah with definitely. the politics. Yeah, that'd be interesting. So um yeah, I'm like I really wanted to kind of uh, embed with them, you know, and go to the field, see what you know, and just kind of see how things change, get to know, you know, some of the Marines, and whatnot, mm-hmm. and document uh, the so training corps, kind of exactly. see how that's yeah. maybe changed because yeah. it's been well, ninety five. That's looking at two decades ago, man. Yeah, you old. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're, you're, old. Old. <laughs> you're old. You're old. You're old. Oh shit! Uh, Remember, man. Jurassic Park came out two decades ago. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Before we yeah, before we jump into that kind of last question, I definitely want to give a little boost here. Um, what we're doing is we're looking at uh, a magazine that CJ was just recently featured in, and before I fuck up the name and all of that stuff, I'm gonna let him kind of talk about this so you were recently featured in what is this called well the first one was uh it's called etc magazine city college of 
you know, it's a city college in mm-hmm. SF. Their magazine. It was when uh, Jane Kim and uh, uh, Bernie came to town and everything. And uh, yeah, I just kind of snuck in with the help of somebody else. I was in my uh, journalism class uh, that I unfortunately had to drop like a month before that. Uh, jumped right in there, said I was like a journalist for the paper or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of sneaking my way into things like I always do. And uh-huh. um, I was able to get a really cool shot. My uh, showed the guy uh, that I was working with that was in my class. He was the uh, editor for um, for uh, Cetera Magazine. And uh, he really liked my shot. I got a call randomly out of the blue from my uh, old teacher. And she's like, hey, we want to feature your this shot of Jane Kim holding up the, uh, you know, the City College free tuition uh tabard whatever on uh the front you know we want to give you the cover i was yeah. like dude hell yeah yeah there so you go. here's my work and it's funny because she always like she always would always say like you know always you know ask for money because you know you're not going to get paid with uh recommendations you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i'm like okay here's my here's the cover here's the photo you know go ahead and use it you know how much are you going to pay me and uh-huh. you know that was i don't know when was that back in like Fall 2016. 2016. I'm still waiting for my check. So, uh, <laughs> of course, of yeah. course. <laughs> As um, that's the life of a photographer. Always yeah. waiting. Always waiting. Yeah. You know. But um, but then uh, so the summer of love was uh, you know still going on, and uh, I was I'm a I was photographing this uh, thing over in the hate called the thing where me and my friends we would all get together once a month uh, on a Monday, and they would uh, we would chat about. I mean, not chat, but we would, uh, there would always be a theme uh, for that following month on, uh, you know, you know, just some random theme. Um, unlikely friendship was one of the themes, you know, and so somebody would write a song about that. And uh, so we it was kind of like an open mic sort of thing, but uh, we'd have, you know, 10 whatever presenters that would sing a song or uh, speak about a poem or something. Um and, you know, I would just kind of go around and photograph that. One day, randomly, like, I was going around photographing. I was showing this guy who just happened to be staying in there for, like, the week. Because he was here from uh, New York working for a, a Dutch magazine called a De Volksgrant. means the people's paper. Uh-huh. And uh, he really liked my work. He showed my showed his editor my uh, photography. She really liked it. And they commissioned me for a Summer of Love uh, article. So, you know, I was just... A lot of them I already had. And luckily, that was the... Uh, the, uh, street photo street yeah street photo weekend and everything so i just cruised around and uh got a bunch of shots from the hate street fair which uh-huh. awesomely was going on sent those all in they loved them you know paid me a good good me you know a good amount yeah and so yeah i got like 13 pages or 13 photos or so in this uh magazine um you know in amsterdam and it just really brought together with the summer love, yeah, I mean a lot of them were cheesy, you know, <laughs> but yeah, but you know, yeah. cheesy like kind of photos and yeah. stuff that, you know, but they were like the um, stereotypical hate street summer of love photos, right? But, yeah. You know, it's just like they like to see that, yeah, you know, and especially I mean you're looking at something from the outside looking in, mm-hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, and then what is it like a two or three page spread? Yeah, so uh, yeah, it was cool. I was really happy with that. They turned out well and. Uh, yeah. You know, it's really cool to see a lot of my friends in this uh, magazine. Yeah, so not only you know, are you a big deal in the United States, but you're overseas too. International. <laughs> yeah, international. Man. So, yeah, Calais, Amsterdam, yeah, where else, man? Yeah. Like us. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> well, coming off kind of the international subject, um, Jim, you want to throw that last question that we always give our guests? Well, let's talk, let's talk about this now. Quick question. If you were, if you had a choice of uh, shooting anywhere at any time any particular time since the inception of the camera where would that place and time be uh man i know i mean i've talked about with casper you know like about uh you know 50s like 40s 50s kind of um that time era but you know i've been thinking about this last couple days you know i mean it's I kind of, I don't know, man, it's, 50s would be great for me just because, you know, late 40s, 50s, because it was like that post-World War II era, mm. and World War II is my favorite era, you know. World War II is your favorite, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. No, I mean, just, know what you mean. <laughs> no, I'm saying, that's the same thing I said. That's my, yeah, that's my say, post-war, oh, I said post-war Europe. He said post-war, post-war Europe. Europe, yeah, yeah. same okay. era. Yeah. 
But, but I mean, what area? What's that? Like what area of the world? Uh, probably New York. I mean, just because it's kind yeah. of the hub of the yeah. world, you know, almost. Yeah. Definitely the United States. Uh-huh. Um, It'd be a little but, dangerous. Huh? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if I was, you know, if I were able to go back in time and do that with what yeah. I know now, you know, then yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I've never really shied away from those really... Uh, kind of hostile areas or anything i've never been like that in my life even before the military yeah you know it's just with education comes a way in i guess you, uh-huh. know, you just have to you know sometimes fake it or educate yourself but yeah yeah 1950s late 40s just what the world was uh changing you know how the world was changing mm-hmm. you're looking how at the industrial world was and the industrial revolution you know baby baby boomers yep. yeah i mean it was just it was a crazy time mm-hmm. you know what was happening and whatnot. Post depression. Uh, like, there's a lot yeah. to go around. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Um it's yeah. easy to forget how much happened in a fifteen year span. Yeah. Oh yeah, the whole world changed. I mean yeah. you know the United States became a world power mm-hmm. and the you know and the growing pains with that came with that. I mean yeah. geez, it's like act three start. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean it's it, it's a great thing for it's it's kinda like I said, I like to, you know, post war Europe because they were rebuilding, they were changing. Yeah, yeah. they were rebuilding. Everything was fucking destroyed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you see people going about their business, you know, but with the backdrop of these destroyed, you know, basically a destroyed city, but they're still trying to go about their business. I would love to try to capture that, and it's and it's pretty much in, in your way. You know, you you want to do the United States. Mm-hmm. It's, there's a different aspect. I mean, you know, they're yeah, they're becoming a world power. You know what they. We're, you we, know, we are becoming a ish. world. Yeah, God, have I disassociated <laughs> with the U.S. government? <laughs> oh, <laughs> funny in these times, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, but, uh, well, but yeah, yeah, it's becoming a world. Things are changing, yeah. you know, and, and yeah, they're, they're growing pains with that. And there'll be some interest in photography with that. Yeah. Yeah. And just, I guess the military side of me rather than the civilian uh-huh. side. I mean, if I knew I was going to live through it would be uh, definitely like Vietnam. Yeah. Oh, just, yeah. You know, oh yeah. Just what was happening there? Uh, you know, um, I mean, I've done a lot of research about Vietnam, uh, about mainly snipers. You know, um, uh-huh. that was happening. You know, the tunnels of Kuchi, uh that were being dug there. I mean, we yeah. had our Bob Hope here. You know, during Vietnam and mm-hmm. whatnot, and it was crazy because like uh, the Vietnamese, they had their Bob Hope, and so anytime you know we would bomb them. There's this big crater, and a lot of the times these tunnels would actually come into a crater. And these, the Vietnamese like uh, entertainer Bob Hope, they would they would do his shows in these craters. Huh? You for know, real? For real? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, there's brain surgeons that were using homemade drills to do brain surgery. You know, in tunnels. Uh, I mean, these tunnels were over like 300 miles. Just this huge, huge network. Conglomeration uh, yeah. network. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. I really, I would, you know, love to be able to photograph those, you know, what the troops were going through with the army, the military, everybody, you know, we're going through those hard times. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's just, it was just a whole different, like, obviously time in our era, but I mean, it was like, you know, we were so used to winning wars up uh-huh. until Vietnam. Right. Like, you right. know, and we just got bitch slapped yeah. because I mean, most of our troops were died because of uh, booby traps. Yeah, not gunfire. Mm-hmm. It uh-huh. Average falling in a bamboo pit. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know the average uh, amount of rounds that it took to kill one person was over two hundred thousand rounds. Wow. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's so a lot of frustration, a lot of uh, yeah, really dark days there. Well, um, the setting must, on the theater changed. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. gonna say you must be a fan of Eddie Adams. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I heard the name. I'm just not familiar with the work. Oh, okay. Anyway. He's he's the guy that had the guy. The guy was shooting the 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 Viet uh, the Viet the, the, oh, the Viet yeah, 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 yeah. yeah in the street yeah and actually with that shot the, that he, the uh, bullet was actually inside the guy's head in that photograph uh-huh. yeah 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 yep. yeah and I think the uh, captain or the corporal whoever the guy that pulled the trigger uh-huh. he was a general general, general, he's general. A general colonel I think maybe at the yeah. time yeah but yeah he moved to New York yep. and people found out who he was and they were scrolling on his little shop They're like we know who you are you're gonna die he's somewhere in like Montana well he eventually yeah. lived out his life in like somewhere in the uh, deep west hmm. I got a chance to meet Eddie Adams one time oh did wow. you really at the Apple store in Chicago 
He uh, can't make a places. Pres- yeah, he made a presentation there with with another photographer. I cannot remember who it was, but there were two famous photographers. And they came, and I got the chance to meet them. And then a couple of years later, he died. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. well, cool. Well, from that, let's go ahead and uh, let the people out there know where we can find more pictures, more information about you. All right, so. Uh, my website again is uh, C Lacero Photos, and that's my last name is spelled L U C E R O. So C Lacero Photos, and uh, it would I would love it if people more people followed me on uh, Instagram. You know, it's just more inspiration. But uh, right. that one is uh, at Range Grinder, again at Range Grinder. Um, it's where I post most of my work. You know, every day, and I'm you know pretty, very active on there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah. All right, Jim. I'm at jimwatkinsphoto.com, and all of my social media platforms are linked right to it. Good deal. And you can find out more information about me at recasper.com. That's any of my blog posts, any of my uh, current projects, workshops, things of that nature. Uh, But most importantly, go to streetpx.com. That's where you're going to find all of our past episodes, and we're actually... Uh, closing in on 50 episodes. Yeah. Believe it or not. I wonder who's going to be the 50th. Ah, uh, TikTok, we might TikTok. Have a party, man. You might have to. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, go take a look at streetpx.com. Also, um, take a look at patreon.com. Um, this episode actually will have bonus content, so you definitely. Uh, would would be very advantageous to be a Patreon contributor because you get access to all bonus content. Um, depending on the tier that you choose, you can get photo reviews directly from Jim, myself, or any of our guests following an episode, um, or uh, pr- free prints, a uh, number of different things. But you can give a buck, you can get five bucks, whatever you feel comfortable for. Everything uh, that we receive goes back into keeping the bandwidth flowing on Street PX. Additionally, we like reviews. We love feedback so let us know send us an email at contact at streetpx.com or search us out on itunes google play music heart iheart radio and throw us a review we want those we need those that helps us get into more ears um so that said i want to give a big thank you to all of you out there listening and a big thank you to cj for you know taking the time to talk thanks a lot man yeah excellent and um here soon we will talk to you in two weeks all right Um, Happy trails, and don't freak out because of the eclipse next week. (laughs) Or this eclipse that just happened. Who knows? I I forgot. (laughs) Fuck it. Bye. Time warp. Bye. (laughs) Um.